Good afternoon. My name is Paul Hughes, and I'm the Regional Public Affairs Officer for the U.S. General Services Administration, and I'm your moder moderator for tonight's meeting. On behalf of the U.S. General Services Administration and our valued federal partner, the U.S. Courts, thank you all for joining us here tonight for this public meeting on the new federal courthouse project here in Hartford. Tonight's meeting is an important part in the environmental impact statement process, otherwise known as the EIS, for the proposed siting and construction of a new federal courthouse. This, allow, this meeting allows for early public involvement to help determine which issues the EIS will address. As part of the meeting, we will just, oops, why am I, my slides advancing? Sorry, folks. There we go. As part of the meeting, we will describe the NEPA process, share project information with you, and let you know what the next steps are in the NEPA process. During the meeting, you will have an opportunity to hear about the project, the NEPA process, and learn how you can provide input on the issues that are important to the community. As we move through the meeting, Please remember that tonight is the first opportunity, just the first opportunity, for you to provide GSA and the courts with input on what resources and issues are important to you. Your input is a valuable and critical step in this process, and it will be used by GSA to determine the scope and content of the EIS. Tonight, you will hear information from GSA Project Manager Bob Herman, NEPA Project Manager Carrie Bergeron, Site Program Manager Sarah Massarello, the Honorable Michael P. Shea, Chief Judge for the U.S. District Court for the District, District of Connecticut, try saying that five times fast, and Leon Kolenkevich and Ocean Paranjape from Solve Inc., GSA's contractor for the EIS process as part of the National Environmental Policy Act. And finally, it's important to, to remember that tonight, GSA and the court are here to listen. We are in the early stages of a long and complex process. While there will be a time and place for questions about the project, tonight we are primarily interested in your comments and concerns regarding the project's impacts, but we will not be answering questions. You're probably asking why that is. Simply, we need to listen and consider all of the comments that you raised tonight and throughout the process in order for us to make an informed decision on the project. So tonight's just for listening to your comments. We'll take questions further later in the process, but not tonight. Again, on behalf of GSA and the court, thank you all for being here with us tonight. Our first presenter tonight is Leon Kolenkevich from Solve, Inc. Leon. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming and hearing us out here. I'm going to speak to you a bit about the National Environmental Policy Act, or as we call it in the jargon of our profession, NEPA. It was uh, passed in in 1970, so it's been around for half a century or so, and it's the main means by which federal agencies look before they leap, right? It, 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 it forces them to take a close look at their proposed actions and decide what those impacts might be from those actions, what alternatives to them are, and it gives the public an opportunity to see this information that has been disclosed and have their own input and weigh in on it. Uh, so uh, reading off of this a bit, it uh, forces all federal agencies, in this case GSA is the lead federal agency, to examine the potential impacts of their projects on the human and natural environments. And then doing that will be preparing an EIS, an environmental impact statement that reviews those potential impacts and describes alternative ways of doing them, that of, of reaching the desired goals that help one avoid those impacts. Now, throughout the NEPA process, the public will have opportunities 
to uh, make its views known and to provide input to the process. This is the start of that. It's called the scoping period. GSA is going to review all written comments and consider those comments, the substantive ones among them, in uh, developing the EIS. Uh, so uh, we, we sometimes refer to NEPA as an umbrella federal statute. It brings along with it or, or has under this aegis or umbrella, a number of other relevant statutes, including the National Historic Preservation Act, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Archaeological Resources Protection Act, the Endangered Species Act, and uh, uh, executive orders on environmental justice, uh, among others. Uh, so when we de start developing the EIS, the first thing we're going to do is develop descriptions of the so-called affected environment. This isn't intended as an encyclopedia of history reaching back to the Ice Age here in Connecticut, but rather looking at those resource topics that might potentially be affected by the proposed action. Among those that we think are most relevant for this particular proposed action of a new courthouse are air quality and climate change, land use, utilities, visual resources, traffic, noise, solid, solid and hazardous weights, wastes uh, among some of the others listed here. And again, we would appreciate your impact on which of these or others that we don't have listed here are important and deserve that uh, special look that NEPA provides. Uh, so here's a, a, a diagram or a graphic showing the overall process. Uh, a, a notice of intent was published in the Federal Register on May 26th, just a few days ago. We're holding that, that uh, uh, began the, the public scoping process. We're holding a meeting as part of that process right now. Today, uh, June 6th, the scoping will go to July 6th. You can get comments in until then. Uh, in the meantime, we're gonna be starting on the draft environmental impact statement. And uh, when that is done, some months later, uh, there will be a comment period on that and we will have another public meeting uh, during the, the public comment period on the draft EIS. Uh, that will lead to a final EIS, final environmental impact statement, and that final EIS, among other things, will include probably an appendix called comments and the response to comments. All substantive comments in an environmental impact statement have to be responded to by the lead agency. GSA in this case, uh, will publish the uh, GSA will publish the final EIS, and then there will be a waiting period after which a record of decision formalizing the agency's decision on what action to take will uh, will be published once again in the Federal Register and and local media. So scoping the period we're in right now really constitutes public outreach, and the purpose of it is to obtain comments and input from the public, local government, other interested and affected parties, stakeholders on the proposed new courthouse project. Uh, and these comments are going to help inform the analysis. They'll help divide the development of project alternatives and the selection and emphasis given to the various resource topics that I showed you earlier. This EIS is due to analyze four different alternatives Three of them are so-called action alternatives because they involve taking an action different from what is happening right now. And those three actions involve three separate sites within the city of uh, Hartford. Each of these will be, dis uh, will be explored and scrutinized as a distinct alternative. And then there is one no action alternative that NEPA forces us, re requires every EIS to look at. That's leaving things the way they are right now. No new courthouse would be built. The courts would continue to operate as they do under current conditions. And the whole point of the no action alternative is to provide a baseline against which the three action alternatives are, are going to be compared. So here are the next steps in the NEPA process. We're gonna develop the draft EIS to analyze the effects of the project, the proposed action on all resource areas that might be potentially impacted. Uh, when we finish that draft environmental impact statement, we'll host, we'll host another public meeting uh, here in Hartford to obtain public 
uh, uh, comments and reaction to the, the, uh, the, the findings of the, the draft EIS. Those comments will then be incorporated into the final EIS and substantive comments will be responded to and in many instances result in changes to the draft as it's converted into the final EIS. And then finally, the final EIS will be published and the record of decision, what we call the ROD, will be published in the Federal Register and made available locally. It formalizes and summarizes the findings of the EIS and gives the basis for the final decision that uh, GSA will take with regard to the proposed action. This then marks the conclusion of the NEPA process. Uh, so with that, some background. Thank you, Leon. Our next speaker is the Honorable Michael P. Shea, Chief Judge for the U.S. District Court for the District of Connecticut. Your Honor. Thank you, Paul, and thanks to all of you for coming this evening. We at the District Court are excited to begin this next step of the process of finding a new home for the federal court in Hartford, in the great city of Hartford. <clears throat> Before I start my remarks, though, I do want to give a shout out to our congressional delegation. They worked hard to find us the money for this project, and without them, we would not be able to build a new center of justice in Hartford fit for the 21st century. I'm going to begin with a little bit of background about the district court in Connecticut. The Federal District Court in Connecticut consists of three seats of court. Of course, there's Hartford, there's also New Haven, and Bridgeport. <clears throat> Our long-term planning studies have shown that it makes it's in the court's interest to uh, move the headquarters of our clerk's office, of our probation office, from New Haven to Hartford. And so when the new courthouse is built, we will actually have more staff in the new building than we have in the Ribicoff building. Um, I should add, though, that, of course, we will continue operations in the Lee building in New Haven and uh, in the McMahon building in Bridgeport after the new courthouse is built. This just shows the sites of our three seats of court, New Haven, Bridgeport, and Hartford. So I'll now talk to you a little bit about the need for a new courthouse. So we're currently, the federal court in Hartford is currently situated in the Ribicoff building on Main Street. That building was built in 1963, over two generations ago, really a different time. And um, it's an understatement to say that we've outgrown that building from a physical space standpoint, from a security standpoint, and from other perspectives. <clears throat> The building does not meet our current needs in many ways, and I won't bore you with a long list, um, so, but security is at the top of that list. So obviously the Ribicoff was built before the Oklahoma City bombing, before 9-11, before some of the other modern security problems that courthouses face. So to just give you one example, currently our detainees shackled have to move through the same hallways, the same corridors that the public moves through. So that's not an ideal situation, obviously. There are others that we could talk about, uh, and we will at another time. <clears throat> so um, as I mentioned, the court and GSA have conducted studies over the years to analyze potential long-term options for what we expect will be increased operations in Hartford. One option was to renovate the existing building. Another option was to move to a new courthouse. Ultimately, these studies concluded that it was in the best interest of the court to build a new courthouse and to move the court's operations. So this just summarizes the, the ultimate purpose of the project, which is to accommodate the current and long-term needs of the district court in Hartford. Um, talks about some of the needs that I 
mentioned. Um, the building systems is something we didn't get into, but th that will be discussed as part of the process. Um, there are just a lot of challenges in the existing space. So again, I want to thank you all for coming. And last, I'll say we really value your input. Um, we want um, the court to be part of the community. And so um, you know, we're going to listen carefully to the comments you have to offer this evening. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Bob Herman, GSA project manager for this effort. Bob? Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Judge Shea. Good evening. I'm glad we're all here tonight. I sincerely appreciate all of you taking the time to help us with this very important decision. Again, my name is Bob Herman. I'm fortunate to be the GSA project manager for this project. Over the past 25 years, I've had the fantastic opportunity to manage many federal construction projects. I've worked with the DOD, the Navy, the Air Force, and over the past 15 years, almost exclusively on judicial projects with GSA throughout all of Connecticut, including New Haven, Bridgeport, and of course, Hartford. Together, working with the judiciary, we've completed countless projects, and I really am honored to continue working with the judiciary and the city on this landmark project. If I can share a few details about this project to date, we have received funding from Congress. Congress has appropriated $335 million for this project. Now this includes site selection, site acquisition, design of a new courthouse following GSA design excellence procedures, construction of a new courthouse also following construction excellence procedures, as well as management and inspection. I did wanna speak a little bit about design excellence. Design excellence is a proven method for producing high quality and sustainable buildings. Design excellence has many specific goals. Many of them are typical, we've all heard on time and un under budget, but there are a few more that I'd like to key in on. It includes the best value for the taxpayer, develop safe and attra attractive workspaces, coordinate planning and design with local community, part of what we're doing this evening. It leverages the skills of America's most qualified tradesmen and artists, and provides stewardship for the next generation of our respected landmarks. Now this process also includes bringing in national peers who are experts in architecture, urban development, and all various engineering and construction disciplines to provide input at very specific stages of our project. And in this case, I'm happy to say this pro process has worked really well when we went through a source selection board to select our designer. <laughs> Together with, with a selection board that was comprised of the courts, local and national GSA architects, as well as a national peer, we were able to evaluate over 30 proposals. And I'm happy to announce that we will be working with Michael Maltzen out of LA, who had spent some time growing up in Hartford, and his mom still lives, from my understanding, still lives in Hartford. And Michael is paired up with SLAM Ar Architects out of Glastonbury, Connecticut. SLAM Architects has uh, done many other courthouses, they have a lot of local expertise, so I'm really happy to be working with them. Some key features of the courthouse. The courthouse will be 281,000 square feet. It will house offices for various federal tenants, including all of the judiciary, the United States Marshal, U.S. Probation, United States Bankruptcy, GSA, and there will be also a, a small office for uh, a congressional suite. 
Now this will include 66 indoor secure parking spaces and it will follow US Green Building Council, LEED Gold and Site Silver. Additionally, this will follow GSA's extensive sustainability program. And for us, the focus of sustainability will be on minimizing energy consumption as well as waste and it'll have a detailed focus on the long-term operational functions of the new building. Again, I'd like to thank each of you for taking time to join us tonight to learn more about this project. I am very much looking forward to our continued collaboration on this important project for the judiciary, GSA, and the city of Hartford. For that, I thank you and will pass it on to my colleague. Thank you, Bob. Our final presenter tonight is GSA's Sarah Massarello. Sarah? Thank you, everyone. Thank you to the team, and thanks for everyone for coming out tonight. My name is Sarah Massarello, and I lead the site program for the U.S. General Services Administration in the New England region. I've been with GSA running this program for the past 15 years. So I've worked on projects for site selection and acquisition all throughout the Northeast. I thought what would be helpful if I told you a little bit more about the site selection process to date, how we got to where we are, the three sites that we're looking for comments on, and where we're going next. As Bob had mentioned, Congress authorized and funded this new courthouse project. And so because it includes site selection and acquisition, we formed a site selection team. That team consists of representatives from both the courts and from GSA. And then we look to GSA subject matter experts in all different fields, many of them touching on the resource areas that had been spoken to earlier with regards to NEPA. So what I mean by that is we talk to folks that have everything to do with site development and courthouses real estate, design and construction, historic preservation, urban planning, sustainability, utilities management, environmental justice, floodplains, accessibility. We can add more to that. Those are just a handful of them that we're looking at. Then we determine the minimum site requirements for the site where the courthouse might go. First and foremost, the site needs to fit the courthouse. So we're looking at a 281,000 square foot courthouse, which would approximately fit on a minimum, of an, a minimum of a two acre site. The second criteria for the minimum requirements is that it has to be within the city limits of Hartford. As Judge Shea had mentioned, there are three seats of court in the District of Connecticut, New Haven, Bridgeport, and Hartford. So the courthouse site has to be able to fit the courthouse and be within the city limits. So charged with those minimum site requirements, we began our market research in December of 2021. And we started with what's called our request for expressions of interest or an REOI, which is very bureaucratic speak for saying, we went out to the public and to the real estate development agencies or entities in the area and said, hey, do you have any sites that you might want us to consider for the courthouse? We're looking for at least two acres. We're looking for it to be in the city of Hartford. We sent out a targeted um, email campaign to landowners in the area, real estate firms. We spoke with the city and the state. We issued a press release. Um, hopefully some of you saw it or all of you saw it in the Hartford Current, Hartford Business Journal and other areas asking for folks to send us sites to consider. We received several sites during that period, which was from December of 2021 through May of 2022. Uh, we met with officials from the city of Hartford, the state of Connecticut, about potential and available sites that might be suitable for the courthouse. We conducted research identifying additional sites that perhaps hadn't been offered to us. We visited uh, Hartford many times. Some folks live in Hartford. We visited all the sites that had been sent in to us uh, through the offer process. So that happened during the summer of 2022. And then in October of 2022, we made the decision on three sites that were initially identified as being the best sites um, for potentially siting the courthouse. Um, shortly after making that announcement, again, we did issue a press release. 
I hope everyone reads their local papers and saw it. Um, after, shortly after that, the, one of the property owners decided they no longer wanted us to consider the site for the courthouse, and so we agreed to remove it from consideration. So in October, November of October of 2022, we had still had two great sites. During this time, we had been talking with the state and we find out that they are going through analysis of their properties throughout the state and they might have a property available for us to consider in Hartford. We reviewed it through the same process we had reviewed other sites that had been formally offered to us. We decided that it also was a great site to consider for the courthouse. So now we're back up to three sites. The three sites, which as just to circle back to the NEPA process, each of these sites correlates to one project action alternative. So they're listed here in order from north to south, or if you're looking at it from left to right. The Woodland site is in yellow, the Allen site is in pink, and the Hudson site is in green. A quick summary on each site, the Woodland site is on 10 acres of land. It's improved with an existing state office building. It's in the Asylum Hill neighborhood, and it's surrounded by uh, different types of properties, but has the St. Francis Hospital um, campus just to the northeast, and then it has the Park River to the west. The Allen site is a surface parking lot on a little bit over two acres. It's in downtown and it's in between uh, Union Station on the left and then ex the Excel Center on the right or west to east. Um, the Hudson site is also a surface parking lot with an auto detailing shop on it on about two and a half acres of land just south of Bushnell Park. Here are those sites again shown. Woodland site in yellow, <coughs> Allen site in pink, and the Hudson site in green. Zooming in on them a bit, um, this is the Woodland site outlined in yellow. You can see a little bit more closely the state office building, which is in the northeast quadrant of the property. On the west is the Park River you can see by all of the, all of the trees, and part of the property does have some of the river in it. To the northeast, then you've got St. Francis Hospital. There's the classical high school to the north. Um, and then Yukon School of Law is just on the other side of the Park River. The other thing that I've highlighted in here, which I hope you can see on the screen, is the National Register of Historic Districts. Each of these sites um, abuts uh, National Register Historic Districts. So as it has been spoken to earlier with the umbrella uh, slide about how NEPA looks at a whole a bunch of other laws, including the National Historic Preservation Act. So that's why I'm pointing out where the historic districts are. And the Woodland site, we've got the Asylum Hill uh, National Register Historic District, Prospect Ave, and Seminary. The Allen site, shown in pink, you can tell how it's sited by the I-84 kind of curving around from the north and then uh, to the south. It's got Union Station on the left and the Excel Center on the right, so it's, it's sandwiched right in between those. It's slightly north of Bushnell Park. And the historic district that's shown here is the Ann Street National Register Historic District. The third site is the Hudson site. It's the southernmost site. We are going from north to south. The Hudson site, if you'll notice, it actually consists of two separate parcels that are separated by Hudson, uh, by Hudson Street. Um, the larger site is about 2.2 acres, and it does have the auto detail shop on it in the northeast northeast corner, and then a small parking lot is on the other site. This area you can see, it is close to the Ribicoff Federal Courthouse, or Federal Building and Courthouse, which is about two blocks away. It's about a block south of Bushnell Park. The Bushnell Performing Arts Center is a few blocks to the west, and then there are some state properties. There's the state capitol. I don't have it shown here, but there's a state office building and some state courthouses also to the left. So those are the three sites. Um, this is where we are in the process right now of the site selection uh, effort. And this is where we're looking as part of NEPA for you all to provide comments to us about what you think about the sites and what we should study around them as part of the NEPA process. So I look forward to your comments. Uh, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you, Sarah.
At this point, we're going to move into the comment period, but before we do, I know that we've given you a lot of information tonight. This presentation will be posted on gsa.gov slash Hartford Courthouse. You will be able to find the presentation. You'll also be able to find all of the current information on project status, any of the releases that we've put out. Um, one of the other things I'd like to remind you about is that there are several ways, in addition to commenting tonight, that you can provide comments to us. Of course, there's here and in person, but you can also send us an email to Hartford Courthouse at gsa.gov with the subject line Hartford Courthouse EIS. You can send it by mail to the Ribicoff at the address here, attention Robert Herman, uh, or you can drop it in a Dropbox also at the Ribicoff. Important to remember that the, the, your comments have to be submitted by July.